Good morning. Anyone who watches or follows sports could tell you that there is a magical age. Just when a young child reaches the age of reason, somewhere around six or seven, where your sports icon is Superman, where there is nobody cooler on earth. For me, Superman was Lynn Dawson. I'm honored to be here today as we celebrate and remember a great man, a Kansas City legend and a true Hall of Famer. Linda, thank you for asking me to say a few words. I'm grateful for the opportunity to share my memories and to speak to Lynn's character. Lynn Jr. and Lisa, thank you for sharing your father with us and thank you for continuing his legacy in your own lives. I was fortunate to watch Lynn play when I was a child, to listen to his broadcasts during my formative years, and to get to know him as a man as I took over leadership of the Chiefs. So today I stand before you, not simply as a representative of the Chiefs, but also as a fan, as a young boy remembering his favorite player, as a business leader remembering a colleague, and as a man remembering a friend. Someone once said, don't meet your heroes because you'll be disappointed. Whoever said that never met Lynn Dawson. Leonard Ray Dawson was born June 20th, 1935 in the small town of Alliance, Ohio. If he were here today to tell a story, he would tell you that his journey to the top of the mountain began that day as he was born the seventh son of a seventh son, and a legendary life began. As a child, Lenny grew up alongside his six brothers and four sisters. He spent his whole life on a team of 11. As a teenager, he was a three-sport athlete, all-state in football and basketball, and captain of his high school team. He got a scholarship to Purdue, played for a coach named Hank Stram, and for three years, was the captain and starting quarterback. Of course, when he was drafted into professional football, we all know what happened from there. For the last several weeks, we have heard about his many accomplishments. Super Bowl champion and MVP, three-time AFL champion, six-time AFL All-Star, and one of just three men to be inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame as both a player and a broadcaster. Former Chiefs Chairman and President Jack Stedman once said that Lynn was Joe Montana before Joe Montana. One day when I get to tell my grandchildren about Lynn, I will tell them he was Patrick Mahomes before Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> but what I'm here today is to share with you goes far beyond the football field and far beyond a list of accomplishments. As great as Lynn was as a quarterback and a broadcaster, he was an even better person. Lynn Dawson was a Hall of Fame man. His professional football career began with adversity. For five seasons in Pittsburgh and Cleveland, Lynn started just two games. But then he ran into his old coach, Hank Stram, and that conversation changed the course of football history. Soon after, just before the 1962 season, Lynn joined the Dallas Texans. It took just one game for my father to realize that Lynn was the future of the franchise. After beating the Patriots in week one, my father engineered the one and only trade of his career, sending the other veteran quarterback on the roster, Cotton Davidson, to the dreaded Oakland Raiders. <laughs> Hank was furious. He couldn't understand why in the world that my dad would trade Cotton Davidson to anyone much less the Raiders. But in the end, it became obvious just how great this move was for two reasons. First, the Texans got the draft pick that would be used to secure future Hall of Famer Buck Buchanan. And second, because it opened the door for the Lynn Dawson era. The next year when the Chiefs moved to Kansas City, Lynn became the town's first sports celebrity. He was popular on and off the field and within a few years, he led the Chiefs to their first Super Bowl. Coach Dram and Lenny had a special connection. Coach loved his confidence and competitiveness. He once said, 
Lynn Dawson will never let you see him sweat. It was this poise and quiet confidence that earned Lynn the nickname, Lenny the Cool. Whether on the field, facing down Minnesota's purple people eaters, or in the locker room during the biggest game of his life, relaxing with a fresca and a cigarette at halftime, Lenny the Cool made everything look easy, even when it wasn't. Lynn began the 1969 season with two injuries, one to his throwing hand and a more serious one to his knee. Two different doctors told him he needed season-ending surgery, but Coach Graham encouraged Lynn to seek a third opinion and then a fourth, and finally he found a doctor who told him that if he rested his knee for a few weeks, he could come back and play before the season was over. So that's what Lenny did. He put the team first, rehabbed his knee, came back, and led the Chiefs to a victory in Super Bowl IV. Bum leg and all, he made it look easy with the same quiet confidence that inspired his teammates. His demeanor also endeared him to his fans. He connected with Kansas City almost immediately. He became the face of the franchise. Lynn's second career as a broadcaster began while he was still playing. He would practice for a few hours, and as soon as practice was over, he would run over to the sidelines, still on his shoulder pads, and interview his teammates for the nightly newscast. As strange as it sounds, Lynn made it look natural. He had a special talent to make everyone he spoke with feel comfortable. Shortly after I'd taken over leadership of the Chiefs, I sat down with, for an interview with Lynn. I was relatively new to these type of interviews, and I was also sitting next to my childhood hero. So as you can imagine, I was pretty nervous. But Lynn put me at ease. Not only was he a professional, but he made you feel welcome. That humility and that quiet confidence were staples of his career, and they were contagious. He got the best out of his teammates and colleagues because he let you know that he believed in you and that you could trust him. Mitch Holtis, the voice of the Chiefs, told me the same thing. He grew up watching Lynn, and like so many of us, he grew up playing football in his backyard pretending to be Lynn. Later, as he joined the Chiefs, radio broadcast, Mitch found himself standing beside a legend. Lenny made him feel like a part of the team. As Mitch put it, he would coach me up. He'd instill confidence in our team, and he made us feel like we were standing in his huddle. These are the kind of stories you will hear throughout Kansas City. Lynn loved what he did, he did it with joy, and he made you a part of his team. His daughter Lisa recalls being in first grade when her class had a career day and everyone was talking about what their fathers did for a living, salesmen, doctors, lawyers, accountants. Lisa got nervous and stood up and said, my dad doesn't have a job, he plays football. <laughs> the funny thing is, a number of years later, Lynn would say the same thing. When he began to scale back his broadcasting career in 2009, he did his final broadcast on KMBC. He said, football was never work for me, and broadcasting was never work. It has always been fun. On that same broadcast, his fellow, as his fellow anchors were saying goodbye, they told stories about how he treated their children. Lynn would come into the studio and make the children laugh. He would playfully check to see if their teeth had fallen out or help them on a school project. That's the kind of man Lynn was. Countless individuals have their own Lynn Dawson stories. Just last week, a friend of mine, Joe, told me about going to Arrowhead for a Chiefs game. It was raining, so he told his wife, Kelly, to wait under the stadium awning while he got the car. He pulls up the car, Kelly hops in and says, I met a very nice man walking out of the stadium, and he offered me his umbrella. We got to talking, but then a bunch of kids ran up and asked for his autograph. Then his wife asked, by the way, who's Lynn Dawson? <laughs> that was Lynn, never one to brag or showboat. In fact, on the air sometimes, you may not have even known that he ever played for the Chiefs. You see, Lynn was a professional journalist. If the Chiefs weren't playing well, and particularly if the quarterback play was substandard, Lynn would not mince his words. 
When we watch games in our suite, we always have the radio broadcast playing. I can remember a few times after an interception or a poor play thinking, you know, we should really turn that off. <laughs> Lynn was genuine. He was real. He certainly cared about the Chiefs, but he also cared about the Kansas City community. And his involvement in the community extended far beyond his playing days. For 46 years, the Lynn Dawson Scholarship has benefited high school students in greater Kansas City. Each year before a game, Lynn and I would meet with a young man or a young woman who was the recipient of the scholarship. Lynn would always engage them. He would ask about school, their college plans, and their future ambitions. In 1973, Lynn was recognized for his many philanthropic contributions with the NFL Man of the Year Award. Today, nearly 60 years after moving to Kansas City, his impact on the community continues to grow. For the past few weeks, I have felt so blessed to hear story after story about Lynn Dawson. They are stories of character, of humility, and of joy. They are stories of how he treated people, how he made them feel. And time after time, I am reminded of my father. Shortly after Lynn's passing, his son Lenny Jr. shared with me a few thoughts about his dad. I heard stories about the two of them playing sports together, about days at Arrowhead or nights at Channel 9. One comment stood out to me because it's a statement that every father wants to hear. Lenny Jr. said, I lived the childhood that every kid dreams about. And at the end of the conversation, he said, I will cherish those memories forever. Lynn Dawson's character is perhaps best summed up by his mentor and close friend, Hank Stram. At his induction into the Pro Football Hall of Fame, Stram said, when I think of Lenny, I think of honor, I think of class, I think of style, I think of grace, and I think of dignity. Today, we say farewell to a Kansas City legend. There will be more chief seasons, there will be more great quarterbacks, and as we all know, there will be plenty of reporters trying to get inside the NFL. But the one thing we know for sure is there will never be another Lynn Dawson. Thank you, and God bless.